Hey guys, welcome to Lovecast, Boys Love Podcast, where we talk about everything related to boys love. I'm your host, Pixie, and with me are my co-hosts, Kayla and Alexa. Hey. Hi. Hi. So today we're going to start with some tea time. We have a couple of stuff, a couple of things <laughs> to, <laughs> to mention. Um, first off, uh, very exciting news uh, that came out was that Game Boys uh, was nominated for an Emmy for uh, Best Live Action Kids Program. Kids Program. Yeah. 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 So, yay! yay! So deserved. I'm so happy about so that. So exciting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's going to be really exciting to see if they actually win it. Yeah. I'm kind of curious about um the other stuff that was nominated 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 <laughs> in the same category as them I think I might mm -hmm. see if stuff is available to check out just so I can see like what the other shows are but I'm really excited for them I feel like they have a good chance I actually don't really know how the international Emmys work or how like mm -hmm. the regular Emmys work like in terms of voting um but I'm really excited for them either way so I mean yeah, it's a I huge deal I feel like I saw one nominee and I can't remember what it was, but I remember thinking that I knew what that was, like it was really mainstream. Mm -hmm. So it kind of feels like Game Boys is kind of being pushed sort of into the mainstream, which yeah. is great for the community. I mean, I think so too. Amazing. I feel really proud of it. Yeah. 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 They've come so far. Seriously. <laughs> It's crazy to think about what a small production it was in the grand mm -hmm. scheme of things, like filmed through the beginning of the pandemic with like people basically just like sitting in front of their computers filming over video and stuff like that for a yeah. lot of it. So it's really, really, really cool to see the yeah. reach that it's still getting after over a year since it first uh, released, started releasing. Yeah. So kind of like seeing your baby grow up. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> yeah. No, it's amazing. So we wish them good luck and we really hope they win. Yes. yes. Um, in a, a similar fashion, um, there was another award show that um, it's a... Yes. Got some awards. <laughs> so I totally gonna butcher this title um so don't come at me for it but it was the 12th nada raja nada raja awards mm -hmm. um and it's a one i think all four categories they were nominated for um so they won drama series of the year best original screen screenplay best drama slash series and bilkin won best leading actor mm -hmm. so and at the same award show bright also won um, best OST for the Kongu OST from the original season of Together. Right. So once again, those two shows taken over the Thai award ceremonies, it seems. So yeah, because this is a Thai award show. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Those were like the two big shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That came out. So yeah, I know that some people think that it say was sort of over rated uh, people say the same thing about together so yeah like, right i feel like the more popular a show gets the more there's going to be people saying that it's overrated like yeah. yeah yeah but i mean they both did what they did really well obviously because mm. they keep sweeping awards so yeah yeah i mean congrats to both it's say mm. and together mm. <laughs> there was also um pp and pp broke the internet the other day <laughs> um <laughs> I guess the context was that Bilkin released a song and he was taking over the Nadal Instagram mm -hmm. or not Instagram Twitter page, like I guess chatting with fans and tweeting about the release and stuff like that. And something he replied to, something he posted, PP replied with a picture of Bilkin kissing his cheek. Um, and the hashtag that broke out was like, PP closes the gate or something like that basically saying that like he shut the gate on everyone trying to flirt with Bilkin kind of like saying Bilkin's his so I mean it 
I woke up like an hour or two after it had been tweeted and it was already like trending, like yeah. had like a thousand, one hundred thousand like retweets and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I can't even imagine where it is in those numbers now. Yeah. Yeah. He knew exactly what he was doing. Oh, when he did that. <laughs> uh, oh I love the energy of it. It was mm-hmm. just like picture with like one or two words attached to it and breaks the internet with it that's Mm -hmm. I love that kind of energy (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, lastly um there was a situation that made um studio Wabi Sabi uh give um notice um they put out this um um statement on twitter uh because of some stuff happening with earth um I'm just gonna read what they wrote first Uh, Due to the spread of rumors and misunderstandings that affect the image of our actor Earth, Studio Wabi Sabi would like people who involved in this matter to stop your actions immediately. Also, we would like to clarify that it's that it is normal for an actor to work and co-star with different people. Therefore, if any of if anyone of you continues to cause this misleading news, Studio Wabi Sabi will take legal action regarding this matter. So there's been some stuff happening with Earth. Um, you were saying, Kayla, that you dug some into what was happening. Yeah, so that notice in particular, I think is in response to all the former cow and Earth stands, shippers, who anybody who comes in, no matter who it is, they probably don't want him with Earth Mm -hmm. (laughs) because they're still caught up on the other pairing. So I think that's what that notice was in reference to. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing that that was mostly Thai fans or Thai fan base. I'm not sure. But then again, they did put it in English. I don't know. And Mm -hmm. then so the other side of it is that there has been some outrage, I think mostly with international fans over the way that Earth and Santa have been promoting the show, specifically on TikTok. Mm. Um, people have been uh, feeling uncomfortable about some of the TikTok dances and trends that they've been choosing to do, because mm-hmm. some of them are very like sexual dances or they're like suggestive. So then you have like that another group of fans who that's what they're upset over. And Mm -hmm. honestly, I I didn't see outrage towards the episode itself of Seven Project. Um, I watched it and I I thought it was cute, like Mm -hmm. and sad, really, really sad. Mm -hmm. Um, But as far as I could see, I did not see much outrage about that. And it was more people being upset about the way that the them as a couple were being promoted. Mm. So that's basically the what's happening and all the outrage that's coming from different angles. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I know in terms of the Cow Earth fans, um, this has been like an ongoing thing. I mm-hmm. just mentioned it before we started recording, but I'm going to say it again for um, the people listening. If people remember back, it was like at the end of last year after Lovely Writer had first been announced um cow was set to do an event with both earth and up together Mm -hmm. and basically cow earth fans boycotted it to the event that up ended up pulling out of the event um so i think they have kind of garnered a reputation for being very i don't know if aggressive is the right word um hardcore maybe about how they feel about the cow earth ship and only wanting to see those two together Um, it's interesting because I feel like when Lovely Writer had aired, I hadn't really seen it being talked about as much. I don't know if, you know, maybe D Hub House just didn't address things that were going on. If the, there were fans out there that were really upset and online posting about only wanting to see Cow and Earth and, you know, boycotting him being with Up. But I feel like it must've ramped up a lot again recently, or maybe it's just particularly against earth for some reason if wabi sabi felt the need to comment on it but i just feel like i didn't see the same response 
one lovely writer was really heavily promoting. And, you know, it's totally possible that we miss it because obviously we mainly see international fans in our online interactions, but Mm -hmm. it definitely feels like there was a difference in the way those cow up has been perceived versus Santa up like this year, at least, if that Mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I was saying earlier that I don't really see the problem with um, Santa being 17, almost 18. I, I've i said this before, like the, the sexual consent age here is 16 and it is in Thailand as well. So for me, um, if they're above 16 and this, it's consensual, I don't see a problem with it. But yeah, people are different. They're brought up in different cultures and they have different beliefs, uh, both religious and non-religious. And uh, everyone is going to feel differently about this. But at the same time, I feel like it's gone to a point where they're really harassing. Like if Studio Wabi Sabi has to come out with the statement to stop yeah. Uh, doing saying things about earth then it's gone to a point where it needs to stop you you're allowed to have your opinion but it's not like they're uh, not like following the law or or taking advantage of anyone or anything like that it's it, everything is legal and everything is consensual so yes you can say your opinion on it Um, but harassment is not okay. And I feel like Earth has been through enough, honestly. Like he's, um, I, I, I still, I'm not, still not over the whole, uh, thing when he was with the, uh, Love Love by Chance Chance crew. Yeah. And, and on stage, uh, was, um, told to, um, guess who people were from their dick pics yeah just because he's part like of the queer community i'm still not over that i I, I, it's not nice that was not horrible and and he's just been getting so much shit all the time from everywhere so i mean leave him be (laughs) Yeah. let him be and I, it's always him it's never cow who's getting like from what we see who's getting all that i i don't know i i, I just feel like he he's an easy target for mm. people which is why and i know i've heard a lot of people talking about how they feel that he's they don't like his personality he's a little bit over the top which i i think personally is cute like i i think he's cute when he's going over the top but some people find that annoying and yeah. they are very vocal about how annoying they find that and I'm just like just don't watch him then <laughs> yeah yeah I mean I've never had any issues with like his personality um I think that you know tying someone who's flamboyant to being annoying definitely mm-hmm. has some uh I don't know how to say, but definitely has some um, connotations there that, you know, don't, don't sit so well with me. Um, But beyond that, I mean, I'll be the first to say, and I've said it before, I don't really love pairings where a person is underage and the other person is an adult. Um, That being said, I think in the context of seven project where they're acting in a series together and acting from a script and stuff like that, I don't really care. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to go out of my, I didn't watch the episode. I'm not really going to go out of my way to watch it. Um, And that's just my personal preference. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I do have a very Western, like American view of stuff like that. So I'm sure that does play into it, but I'm also just like, for me, I'm just like, okay, I just won't watch it. And that's the end of it. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't really feel the need to definitely not harass anyone about it but I don't really feel the need to like make a commentary on it because I can just you know not view the thing that's bothering me and Mm. and you know that's all I need to do you know Mm. I don't know it is a very touchy subject so I don't want to step on anyone's toes or invalidate anyone's feelings about Mm. it because they know they're 
are a lot of people all over that spectrum and a lot of people have different reasons for not being comfortable with that dynamic and I think Mm -hmm. that's totally fine but yeah I think if it comes to the point where the company has to speak out because the actor is target being targeted like that then I think people are going beyond expressing things in a way that is um acceptable acceptable yeah thank you I couldn't think of a word I wanted to use there (laughs) yeah I mean there's something to be said about the way that minors and teenagers are sexualized in Mm -hmm. all media across the board I know we talked a little about that during our panel at Fujifon Mm -hmm. um but I don't know like the company is the one who makes all the decisions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I feel like sometimes the response, they're not, what's the word? They're not directing their anger at the correct yeah. person. Yeah. So if you have a problem with the way that a show is being promoted, and honestly, I do, I had a problem with how they mm-hmm. were promoting but there's just no point in harassing the actors when they're mm-hmm. not the ones making all the decisions. Even something as small as a TikTok, you need to have permission from yeah. like everyone on your team mm-hmm. to be able Very to post something so. like that. So yeah. I don't think that the blame is really fully on earth for anything. I yeah. think it's the company. Um, and just like calling them a pedophile is yeah. just going way too far. Mm-hmm. If you knew what it was like to be in contact with a pedophile Mm. you would not be throwing that term around so lightly yeah how people are with him so that's what really bothers me about the situation yeah um and yeah I just I am a little bothered by the whole thing with Santa being a minor but my anger towards it is not directed at earth it's directed at the company and everyone on that team yeah. yeah, you can go into the discussion that this is really like a part of the uh, rampant fan service culture in Thailand. Mm. And that's yeah. the problem. It's the yeah. companies who are promoting this and using this to create revenue. And it's not on the actors. It's about the expectations being put on them as yeah. BL actors because the fans want to see it. Yeah, yeah I don't think people and we kind of have talked in this in recent episodes recently like Kayla said everything down to like a picture they post a TikTok even the Mm. tweets that they make towards each other Mm. can be considered part of their job and a lot of that stuff is probably run past their managers their promotion teams at the company probably encouraged by the promotion teams you Mm. know post a certain amount of photos or TikToks with each other a day type thing so Mm. um I don't think I mean, obviously we don't know for sure, but, you know, I don't think most of those ideas and videos and stuff that are happening are coming from Santa and Earth themselves out of their own volition to, like, do that stuff with each other, if that makes sense. Like, it's work for them. Um, And so I don't necessarily think the blame is on those two as a whole. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. we've seen it, like, with the contact we've had with the actors for getting them on the show and stuff, like, everything goes through a manager. Mm -hmm. Even if we've been talking to the actor themselves, we, they need to go check with their manager Mm -hmm. all the time. It, everything goes through the companies and managers. So, like... Feel what you feel about Earth, but it's not him doing this. And while he might not mind it, it's still, it's not happening because of him. Mm. And and anyways, like there's a whole team like taking care of and like uh, managing their um, perceived image to the public. So if anything comes out, if the actor is doing anything that's um, bad, like the company should have stopped it. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's really bad to, to direct all of this on the actors. I feel like a lot of stuff gets um, too directed towards the actors. Like you saw with King mm-hmm. Portion and mm-hmm. all the actors getting bombarded with questions when they had no idea or couldn't say anything. It was never the companies that it was directed towards. Yeah, I think companies 
as a whole in every aspect of like any type of media need to start taking more responsibility for Mm -hmm. the things that they do and the dynamics they create and the shows that they're promoting because I think way too often that stuff does fall back on the actors when Mm -hmm. they don't have a lot of control over things so Mm -hmm. you know I think the big companies that are heading these things should be taking more responsibility and taking better care of their teams in that way but I don't know if that's something we'll ever see change anytime yeah. soon, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 Like we said with, uh, when we had Aerie on, like it's, you need to get to the root of the, mm. of the problem and exactly. the root is the company. So we're going to go into more fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> on a lighter note. <laughs> <laughs> on a lighter note. <laughs> Yeah, no, we are going to talk a little bit about pet peeves today. Um, For those who are not um, used to that terminology, if you're um, not used so much to the English language, pet peeves is basically something that annoys you. Uh, And there are different um, severities of how something can be annoying. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I thought we could like ease our way into this and start with the 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 lighter ones, lighter ones, because there are some big ones. And um, we actually asked people on our Twitter and social media what they were thinking. And yeah, we got so many responses. (laughs) And they did very on this. Yeah. (laughs) They got a little bit heavy. (laughs) Some of them. And I get it. Uh, like I, I can't say I disagreed uh, with all of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we're gonna start on the Later low side. end. <laughs> I'm just gonna go- jump right into Please it. Do. I one of my pet peeves is this annoys me like all hell after they've been showering. And they're out of the shower. They're not wet. And they are talking about drying their hair. But their hair is Everything's not wet. perfectly styled already. Yeah. <laughs> they're like drying with a hair dryer. And it's not wet. <laughs> Can you at least just throw some water over these boys? It's, it's so <laughs> annoying. Oh my gosh. That reminds me of like how in K-dramas... Even if someone's like dying, they look so they good. Look so good. <laughs> I was talking about with, like Apple. They have like perfect hair and makeup, like yeah. dying like a model, basically. I mean, honestly, like every show I've seen almost have had some kind of shower scene. And yeah. I think I've seen once that one guy was never actually, actually leave the wet. shower wet. <laughs> and I wasn't that manner of death. I, I seem to remember that Tall actually his hair was actually wet after a shower it happened in um this is not about this is jumping to a different show but it just happened in episode five of don't say no Mm -hmm. um fiat took a shower and he came out and his hair was actually wet but only so that leo could use the blow dryer for him and dry his Mm -hmm. hair for him but Mm -hmm. it was actually wet yeah Yeah, (laughs) i saw that but i wouldn't say that it was like super wet no because <laughs> it was like bouncy but <laughs> but yeah it, it you did clearly see that he it was a little wet but yeah no yeah, it's I, funny I, because I, they put so much emphasis on like the shower scenes a lot of the time mm-hmm. and getting them all soapy and running all that hair under the water only for them to be like perfectly <laughs> dry the next time we see them yes. or like they'll be tallying their hair but it's like already dry <laughs> yeah 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 I mean, it's such an easy t- thing to just make that hair wet. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Someone else? <laughs> um, I guess I could go. Okay. So one of my big pet peeves is I don't like when series have a large cast. Mm, Um, yes I'm one of those people who can watch through an entire season of a show and still not know anybody's names Mm -hmm. (laughs) so I especially struggle when you have a series like why are you for example where 
32 different characters are introduced. Oh my god. <laughs> I went on the my drama list and counted them. <laughs> but like not only is it annoying for that like personal reason of mine, but there's just no way you can properly develop that yeah. many characters, let alone dedicate time to yeah. each of their storylines. Yeah. An ensemble cast should never have more than 12 people. And I feel like even that is pushing even that it. That is a lot. Yeah. And I always found it kind of weird that Thai production companies have their own set of actors that they recast for every series. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's a major factor in some of these shows having a large cast. I feel like they need they're... to put everyone, all of their actors in it some in some all way. The Dumondi boys yeah. needed to be admire you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like they want they want to promote the series which I get but then it's like the series almost becomes an advertisement for the company and yeah. the actual series and it's just why are you is the number one mm -hmm. <laughs> series right. I think of when it comes to a large cast that was just so underdeveloped for yeah. me um Gen Y um mm -hmm. is another one that had like a huge cast and it was fine when they had like come on and copter and bass and his love interests and then mm -hmm. they introduced like eight high schoolers who all also had their yeah. own storylines and romance lines and at that point I was just like who is who like who are yeah. all these children like it just gets to be too much I think it's okay to have like an ensemble cast that's decently big if they're only going to have a minor role or like a supporting mm -hmm. role but mm -hmm. when you try to give them all a love line love story. and yeah. like Kayla said all try and develop their all their own stories then it just becomes way too much yeah yeah I much. think like at least Gen Y did it a little better than Why Are You I oh, feel after definitely. Why Are You I can't even remember all the <laughs> side characters like I, I I know four characters in that show <laughs> <laughs> four main ones Spider tutor Spider. yeah yeah plus the the weird dad the... oh, my God. oh yeah <laughs> that's everything i remember <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's one of mine yes <laughs> arch cast yep um my light one of my light ones and uh I talked about this a lot with Heather um our podcast assistant and this is also a big thing in K-dramas when they will go to a cafe or go to a restaurant and order all this delicious looking food and then they take one sip of it and leave <laughs> it's especially <laughs> big they'll go to like a cafe and they'll get like this gorgeous drink a lot of the times it's like probably a promotion for the cafe oh, yeah. and then they'll sip it maybe once and then someone will leave and just leave their drink on the table mm -hmm. or they'll leave their entire plate of food with one bite taken sitting on the table and I'm just like you couldn't yeah. you could have just eat, at least take the plate with you and dispose of it if you're not going to eat it or something yeah. like yeah. oh it bothers me so much because the food looks so good and it just goes to waste like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I get that um <laughs> another one of mine is whenever they're playing sports they never get dirty or sweaty <laughs> right or anything <laughs> I was just thinking about that with don't say no. I yeah, was like, right? why don't they look sweaty? <laughs> they look they're perfect. playing basketball, but they're not looking sweaty at all. The hair is perfect. Like there's no sweat. Like, what? Yeah. And I when when um the same problem with um Tharn type when they were playing football. Yeah. And Nitty Man, I can't and remember too. there, but I think yeah. there too. And it's just like football is a really dirty sport sport like yeah they were like playing rolling on a around. grass field <laughs> like it's super dirty so I mean it makes no sense at least be a little bit realistic please like everyone just has to look pretty <laughs> that is the number one priority here yeah. oh my god, oh my god. Mm -hmm. yeah my next one has to do with unrealistic depictions also <laughs> Um, I don't like when characters who are described as poor are depicted mm. as middle or upper class. Mm. It just doesn't yeah. make sense. 
for like poor characters to live by themselves in a mm-hmm. condo in the city, eat out at restaurants every day and drive like a fancy imported <laughs> car. They it always have like- a fucking Mercedes or BMW. And I'm like, sir, aren't you supposed to be poor? It's like, <laughs> it's like, it seems like they want to use the rich boy, poor boy trope, but they don't want to show an actual depiction yeah. of poverty. <laughs> Mm. I can. When I think of a series that did it right, I think History Make Our Days Count. Mm, yeah. Right. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, we saw how Yushigu was struggling to pay rent and working two jobs to save up for college. Meanwhile, you have Halting, who was like whining to his parents about <laughs> giving him money to buy a Switch. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> that, um, that rich boy, poor boy trope really works in that series because they make that distinction known. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I would rather them not even show a difference in social class or status mm-hmm. and just let me live vicariously because <laughs> whenever they do show it, they just fail to make it look believable in mm-hmm. any capacity and I hate it. And it's a terrible depiction of what it's like to be lower class. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking this, um, rewatching Perth has been doing like the Ram King retrospective videos on mm-hmm. his YouTube channel. And there's that scene where Ram and King are on the bus. And I was like, I, I think that's the only time I've ever seen a person in a BL take the bus somewhere. And I'm like, <laughs> why do they never use public transportation? <laughs> like if they're supposed to be not wealthy. I mean, I take the bus freaking everywhere in my city. Mm-hmm. Um, it's either like they have a nice car, even though they're supposed to be f- poor or their rich boyfriend immediately just starts picking them up in his nice car. So they never have to worry about like how to get to campus. But I'm like, no one takes the bus anywhere. <laughs> like you're, you're in the city of Bangkok. Like is I would think public transportation would be a thing, but. I mean, this might be some cultural thing as well, but I, my, my parents are, have always been pretty well off. Mm-hmm. Um, like we own um, our own dry cleaning chain. So uh, but I've always taken the bus everywhere. And when I did get my license that I paid for myself, mm-hmm. I got like this crappy like a rinky dink year yeah. old <laughs> Mercedes. Like it was it it was horrible. Like it is the crappiest car I've ever had and the first car that i actually got that was new was like this tiny like yellow bubble (laughs) 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 it was horrible (laughs) so i when i first got my like first like proper nice car i was 30. (laughs) (laughs) i'm like why does this 19 year old have have a bmw like a new 2021 bmw and i know a lot of times it's probably like an advertisement Mm -hmm. or some sort of like sponsorship but come on yeah um the other one i put on my list which is probably one of the universal bl pet peeves is that they don't know how to lock their doors oh yeah yeah or they will choose to like get intimate in like the most inappropriate places or like situations like I don't know I feel like if I knew someone from my family was in my house if I wasn't gonna lock the door then I wouldn't be doing anything you know Mm -hmm. like I feel like they just kind of set themselves up to get walked in on um but I'm like you know lock the door wait till you're alone like I feel like these are the basics of like trying to hook up with someone like especially if you live with your parents or like with your family still which a lot of times it is their parents who are walking in on them so like yeah um, what came up in my head right away was the scene where um in uh, don't say no where um uh where they're (laughs) Where, where, where in the this... hallway with the housekeeper yeah yeah, yeah. In, the, oh, yeah. in the main I'm just room like, of their house when that was happening i'm just like why are you doing that right there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense like i was just waiting for that housekeeper to come <laughs> or like in make our days count when they were like full on taking their clothes off on the couch and yeah. then in the this living room. room. I'm like, hello, this is, is this not the living room? Like, I know you got caught up in the moment, but come on. I feel like no, I would no, be so hyper aware in that situation that like the doors unlocked, someone could walk in. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Have <laughs> like some <that's>, awareness. <laughs> it's a universal BL 
pet peeve that always leads to disapproving parents because they never learn how to walk their lock their doors. <laughs> One of my like bigger ones is the whole Fujoshi stereotype. Mm, yes, uh, I, I fucking hate it. Like I, it brings such a bad rap to the Fujoshi as well. Mm. Like it, it's not a bad thing to be a Fujoshi. It's just like when, especially Thai BLs. They present these women as like maniacs. They're like stalkers, essentially. <laughs> and I and I'm sitting here just thinking, okay, is this normal in Thailand? Like no one would do that here. Like mm. stalking someone or just taking pictures of them without them knowing or filming them or just I don't know. Even like the Ram King scene on the bus where the girls are in the mm -hmm. back just talking about that. loudly <laughs> yeah that's super creepy <laughs> I, I i don't get it why do they need to do this it's always made me wonder if the and this is something i feel like i would want to ask someone about sometime i feel like in every university base bl the fujoshis always run those like cute boy of this mm -hmm. university yeah. facebook pages and i wonder if those are actually things that exist in real universities but like they do like take pictures of people like very unsolicited photos and like yeah. post them in their little university facebook pages and i'm like are those are those facebook pages like do they exist in real life like do they have cute boy of x university <laughs> facebook pages where they like post pictures of men no together idea. and it's fan girl over not something that happens I'm, in <laughs> Yeah, I remember once in a live stream, I asked that because I was like, isn't this so weird that there are always fan pages for couple yeah. series? And mm -hmm. someone from the Philippines said that they saw one before Interesting. for like a school that they live by or something. But that was all the details I got on it. I don't, I don't know if like privacy is looked at differently yeah. in Thai mm. culture, but I know here, if you were taking pictures of like, I don't know, for example, your neighbor as they're walking by, yeah. they call the police on you. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, if you were doing that in Norway, I actually think you could be, um, could be arrested. Um, yeah. So yeah. that's that might be. Cool. So <laughs> I I'm really curious if someone listening to this is actually from Thailand. Please explain. Yeah. Because I, I really want to know if that culture like actually exists like mm -hmm. that type of fan fan girl culture mm -hmm. exists for like or normal if people at universities out of their asses just yeah <laughs> to make a stereotype i mean they can they can easily portray like a fujoshi without making them stalkerish and maniac like you can have a supportive female character mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You would think <laughs> it shouldn't be that hard. It, until we meet again, Manal, yeah. she was yeah. actually pretty decent. Like it's a supportive character, and not like okay, she had her squealy moments, but she's still like a part of the gang, and yeah. it's not like she's stalking them and doing inappropriately behavior. She's it's part of her. But uh, which other show was Sammy in that she was she like super? Too yes that she was, was really bad in that creepy. one <laughs> yeah um this one is probably the most serious one i wrote down but i really don't like when bls promote skin whitening products mm. whether it's a cream you apply directly to your face or one of those vitamin packets that are supposed to brighten your skin yeah. It's like, it's such a commonplace thing in Asian media and society, but I noticed it a lot in Thai BL, like some of the biggest shows like together in two moons Two, and about like a hundred other shows, honestly, have promoted skin whitening products in the actual show, like yeah. during the actual show. And I think it flies over people's heads sometimes because it'll be disguised as a soap or a face mask or yeah. like a nutritional drink and you won't really catch it unless you can read the label mm -hmm. or you physically search up that product for yeah. skin whitening 
But one particular example that was mentioned to me by someone in my Discord was about what the duck. And I did not know this beforehand, but apparently they had a huge skin whitening sponsor for that show to the point where one of the characters in the show had a plot point that had to do with using those products. I'm trying to, I feel like I've wiped that show from my memory, so <laughs> I, I never can't, watched it. I can't God. specifically, it, it ring, rings a bell vaguely, but I don't remember enough of the details to like actually remember, but I'm not surprised knowing that show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it's like, it's not even like it's just the actors making Instagram posts mm-hmm. promoting it. It's the, it's, <laughs> it's actual content in the show. That's and yeah. I think they also do it a lot because you know how um, a series will be cut up in parts on YouTube. They do it a lot in that in between. The beginning, like the ads at the, yeah. 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 So I know my day had the same thing with uh, the, the, uh, the feminine, effeminate brother um, doing like a Mm -hmm. video. He was doing like uh, YouTube videos and with skincare and one of them was like whitening skin whitening yeah watch it, that was so. my day right i'm not thinking <laughs> i think it was, i think it was but yeah yeah i i just i i just remember that because i reacted it, it was the first time that i'd seen it so um blatant yeah yeah and they were really like digging into this whole this is making your skin skin whiter mm. and and i i i have a real problem with um changing the color of your skin um regardless of if it's whitening or if it's darkening i've like in norway there's a real um problem with people uh being fixated on being um darker like you're unhealthy if you don't have darker skin um and to the point that people are like tanning and it looks oh yeah yeah Yeah, i know those people (laughs) so i have I, i have the same problem with the whole tanning thing as i do the skin whitening thing and i think um a little bit of the problem too is that whenever in shows when they're describing someone beautiful um in Thai if in Thai BLs if they're describing a man as beautiful they're mentioning his like milky white skin fair skin yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that like it, it's perpetuates this whole idea that you have to be lighter skin to be beautiful and often they put in like darker skin skinned characters to like contrast it just to Mm -hmm. make it make the point go home and it's so honestly disgusting yeah like I I think you'll notice a lot of the times um I mean there's a few like main character like earth big earth is someone who has an actually Mm -hmm. very tan skin Mm -hmm. um and he's gorgeous um but a lot of the times you'll see the people with darker skin and Thai BLs especially are the people who play like thugs and gang members mm-hmm. and like random side characters and they make a point to make them look like very unattractive mm-hmm. um and I don't <laughs> that point is definitely not lost on me that like that's often the role that they get in the shows yeah, yeah and this is like the companies doing this this is not like yeah it's it's they're doing it on purpose Mm -hmm. they don't have to do that and yeah you most of the actors you'll see do have very light skin but like with earth big earth um you can see also in the show he's shows he's in they they whitewash him they whitewash him yeah definitely do it's Mm -hmm. very sad it's very sad because he is beautiful Mm -hmm. with his natural skin color yeah skin whitening products and all of that it's one of those things that things that goes beyond preference and is very discriminatory Mm -hmm. because you could be like oh well i it's my preference that i want to whiten my skin but what are you really saying about like why do you feel like yeah exactly um okay so one of my more serious ones um 
This is very particular when they have second seasons of BLs or established couples, the cheating plot. I feel like if a show gets a second season Mm -hmm. or if a couple establishes their relationship earlier on in the series, there is almost always some sort of cheating plot or cheating suspicion introduced. Um, And I feel like it's just really frustrating because there are a lot of other issues you can introduce for an established couple, like learning to work through their relationship or um, integrate and like integrate a relationship into their everyday life. But I feel like they always default back to some sort of cheating or cheating suspicion. And honestly, it ruins like a lot of second seasons of shows for me. Um, Like together with me, I found the second season unwatchable specifically for that point. Um, And I think it often, especially if they include it in a second season, they ruin a lot of the characterization that they build up in the first seasons. I feel like a lot of the times the character development for the characters goes completely backwards, introducing like, unnecessary cheating plots or unnecessary suspicions that they had already you know have supposed to have worked through in the first season um so that's always something that really bothers me because I feel like it's just you can tell that the writers don't know what to do after they've established a couple as a couple that's actually in a relationship Mm -hmm. and so they feel like they just have to rely on cheating to make some type of drama and Mm -hmm. it just feels like lazy and most of the time not well we're in at all Mm -hmm. yeah I think like they're just trying to write off like the 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 popularity of the show Mm -hmm. and and not Mm -hmm. actually putting any thought into what they're like an actual plot for the second season yeah yeah (laughs) and writing is hard like and it should be hard not everyone should be able to do it Mm -hmm. so you need to either get a proper writer who actually knows what to do or you need to take your time yeah so yeah most that's usually why I don't like second seasons Mm -hmm. and like with um Game Boys is like a good example of something that's well thought out of Mm -hmm. because they have a good writer and that makes it work. Mm -hmm. But Thorn Type (laughs) 2 did not work. Yeah. (laughs) Love by Chance 2 did not work. Together with me too. Did not work to begin Mm -hmm. with. There was no plan. They just made up something. They didn't take their time. They just needed to ride off that wave. And it fell completely yeah that's why i've been very pleasantly surprised by don't say no Mm -hmm. um i'm always someone who's very hesitant of mames works because of tarn type and the issues that come with that series um but leo and fiat have surprisingly very good communication and Mm -hmm. it and it was really unexpected for me and i think they're really doing a good job of navigating the line of people who are going from best friends into people in a romantic Mm -hmm. relationship and I appreciate that they're not using the fact that uh Fiat was promiscuous in his Mm -hmm. past to introduce like useless issues of mistrust and extended plot lines where Leo's like questioning if if Fiat's cheating on him and stuff Mm -hmm. like that like when they introduce plots they communicate them really quickly and solve them really really quickly and in a really like reasonable and realistic manner so I've been like really pleasantly surprised Mm -hmm. by how that show has been going yeah I I like that uh, whenever uh, there's a conflict of uh, Fiat's past it's Fiat who has a problem Mm -hmm. it's never Leo he trusts them Mm -hmm. and and that's nice to see and I also really like how they've been doing Leon and Fob Oh, that's so what they're, so they're so cute. <laughs> they are so cute, and like the consent and mm-hmm. everything is just, and it's, it's very they well still done have so tension. far. Yeah, so it just shows that Mame can do it if she wants to. <laughs> she really wants to <laughs> get me done. Yeah, but I am really impressed. I I kind of feel like Mame has taken what people have been telling her mm. and actually it. done something with mm-hmm. it. 
And I think she should have credit for that because we're so quick to like judge people and and tell them they're horrible people for writing whatever they wrote and and not swallowing that pride when they actually change. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm very pleasantly surprised by this so far. It's been really nice to watch. Mm-hmm. I I really love the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just hoping it doesn't go down. <laughs> I know. I'm like, we still have six episodes left, so like, fingers yeah, crossed that might, they keep we it might up. Eat our words here. <laughs> like, <laughs> a couple weeks down the line. So about yeah, it's well, happened before with us with shows we've yeah. mentioned loving, and then they've mm-hmm. gone down the drain. So you know, yeah. yeah. But as of right now, <laughs> we'll know that if it starts turning bad, we will be the first one to say something. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem admitting that I was wrong with something if it turns out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, one of my big ones is the whole wife and husband dynamic thing. Yeah. I I freaking hate the labels that they're putting on these BL couples. I even hate it when it's straight people using that. <laughs> but <laughs> I just it it makes for one like it makes it seem like you because wife and husband is terms used for married people mm-hmm. and it makes it like uh seem like you can't be in a relationship with someone without being married mm. and not everyone gets married these days like in in Norway um there are more people like just living together with kids never getting married than there are getting married yeah so it's it's like it's perpetuating this whole standard that you to be a like proper couple you need to follow this line and i hate it yeah (laughs) and it's also putting these men in categories like one is is the wife and the other is the husband i don't think that's cute at all no (laughs) they're both men so they were to get married they would both be the husband here like yeah yeah. It's very much, and of course, you know, it's very stereotypical that the wife role is always established to the feminine. smaller, more feminine mm-hmm. one of the pairing because there always has to be one that's more feminine and it's just mm-hmm. very, very sexist Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and very homophobic, I yeah. feel like, Yeah. and the yeah. labeling. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's what I like about Cairo and Gav because you don't really have that with those just have baby yeah <laughs> but but you you don't have there's no ash hasn't made either one put into a category mm-hmm. they're they're not like one is more feminine and one is more masculine they're both have some feminine traits and some masculine traits yeah. and that's just like how it should be yeah um <laughs> 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 we're getting deeper it's... <laughs> and i'm gonna go back to something that's not as serious um this is just a random one i thought of i don't mm-hmm. like in bls when they wear shoes on the bed mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't even wear my outside shoes inside yeah. so let alone them going on the bed Dude. with the- that is such an American thing to wear your <laughs> shoes inside. I never I, understood no, that. No, it's a white American thing. Oh, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> because the home I lived in in Wisconsin for a year, they walked in on shoes. Yeah. And a lot of the flooring was carpet. It's a carpet, yeah. No. I hate it. <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> The only time I wear shoes inside is whenever I'm going to work out in the garage. <laughs> That's it. And then they go right off immediately. So like, I never understand, like, why, why wouldn't the character just take their shoes off? Like, why would they even be wearing shoes in the bedroom to begin with? Yeah. Yeah, you're driving all the shit into the house and, and, and your feet aren't like breathing. And they're, they're like in this sweaty, small <laughs> space. And it's just, ew. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I have a more serious one again. <laughs> it's going back and forth. Um, I really dislike um, the way they portray like possessiveness a lot of the times in mm. BLs. 
And I think we've talked about it before where like jealousy can be cute when it's the type of jealousy that's like makes you realize that you actually have romantic feelings for this Mm -hmm. person. The kind that's like, oh, I don't I don't like that they're going on dates with this person. Does this mean I actually like them in a romantic Mm -hmm. way type thing? But I hate when you get when they get so jealous that they like forbid their partner from going places or doing things or meeting certain people. Um, It was a lot in like the last episode of why destiny Um, they were like making their partners wear certain clothes. That's like, this is my boyfriend before he goes out and like giving them curfews and stuff like that. And I, it's so gross. And it also feels like weirdly parental, like to give your partner a curfew and be like, be home by 10 30. Like it's just, possessive like it's so unhealthy and it just like doesn't sit well with me when it leads to like um you following your partner or sending people to follow them or like tracking what they're doing like that kind of stuff like I feel like a lot of the times they just push it into a very unhealthy possessive territory that's like they view their partner as someone that they own and therefore can control the things that they're doing and the people that they're seeing and I Mm. don't like it at all yeah that's red flag toxic yeah. relationship. yes <laughs> yeah and they try to make it romantic too in the way yeah. that they portray it <laughs> yeah I remember the scene from why destiny with um uh, mom was it mom? I think so yeah this cute smiley one <clears throat> mm-hmm. yeah he was stopping his partner for going out or he could only go out for this this long yeah thank him and... there were two that were like that in that last episode and they like yeah. made them wear like a specific outfit that's like yeah, i have a boyfriend like, and i'm like outfit. what <laughs> hello it's so yeah, that freaking also, creepy that also reminds me of thorn type because mm-hmm. wasn't um type really jealous that thorn was going to perform at the bar without mm-hmm. him or and then he like thought that he was cheating on him because he was talking to someone <laughs> after so, like, performance. I mean, uh, the whole jealousy thing. I've said this before a long time ago in our first episodes that um, jealousy is just like um, you're mirroring your own insecurities on your partner. Mm-hmm. Um, that you, if you feel like you um, could cheat or you have those thoughts. Uh, then you can think that your partner can do that. Like, yeah. if you trust your partner, you wouldn't be jealous. Yeah. And if you trust yourself, then you would trust your partner as mm-hmm. well. And yeah, it's really unhealthy. It's not cute. It's not sexy. And it's mm-hmm. very it's not romantic. Like, <clears throat> and and really, we shouldn't show stuff like that to younger audiences that mm-hmm. will think that it's normal to be in those mm-hmm. types of relationships yeah. and 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 give them a reason to sort of stay in such a relationship because it's sexy mm-hmm. a small one for me again mm-hmm. <laughs> back and forth <laughs> i i really have a problem with the wipe downs <laughs> oh, oh yeah we <laughs> talked about that before <laughs> no, we've said it me before. too me too <laughs> It's honestly, it's so random. It's so (laughs) weird. And I get it. It's a cultural thing. But seen from the outside, I, 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 I don't get it. I mean, if you need a wipe down, take a freaking shower. <laughs> and then come out completely dry. After yeah, right. <laughs> it reminds me of like Victorian times or something when someone's dying of tuberculosis yeah. and you're yeah. like patting them down in their and bed. They and they didn't have dying. showers. Like, and and my, my main issue is that every time they do that, they do it to make it sexy. Oh my god. But they yeah. show the person like hesitating to like unbutton their shirt and stuff. I'm like, dude, dude. if you're this person's like sick and passed out, sick. just if you're gonna wipe them down, just fucking do it. Stop like, making don't it make sexy. it sexy. <laughs> I mean you can like you can wipe someone down when they're sick without making it look sexy. Yeah, it's not a sexy moment. Like, no. <laughs> Stop sexualizing it. Someone's sick. Like, but I know, <laughs> I've seen it a lot in, like, Japanese manga as well. It's, yeah. they are using it as a reason for them to undress them. 
and I <laughs> it needs to stop so please <laughs> please stop like I'm just thinking like if my partner was so sick that I was like trying to like wipe them down to break their fever or something like that the last thing I would be thinking about was them in a sexual manner I would be mm-hmm. like are like are they okay <laughs> like yeah. are you not concerned about their health and have you noticed that whenever they get sick it's like really random it's like okay yeah. we just need to get this character sick so they can have a wipe down i don't like have like a stressful are... situation and like break out in a fever and like yeah pass out. I mean, and I'm like... if you need to get them out of their clothes like just throw a glass of water on them or <laughs> something i mean my uh, I guess I have another sort of small one that has to do with production. I don't like when they overuse certain effects. So whenever they overuse slow motion shots mm-hmm. or they overuse sound effects or the scene itself is like dragging on a little too long, yeah. <laughs> things like that really bother me from a, a technical standpoint. Yeah, that's a very yeah. Asian thing. Like, you don't yeah. see that in, <laughs> yeah. like, Western... Everything's shown from five different angles before yeah, they can, move on to something can else. Can you imagine scum or uh, young royals with sound effects <laughs> and slow motion? <laughs> <laughs> and whenever they're... Whenever there's, like, sexual attention, they put in the horse noise. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh... <laughs> Holy crap, that would be so weird. It's such an Asian thing to do. It's so funny. Yeah. And oh, like, what just I say is this. kind of funny. I'll give them that. But like yeah. a lot of the times it's so over the top. If you're yeah. putting five different sound effects within a 15 second time frame, <laughs> yeah. you're doing too much. Yeah, yeah, it's like one of those things that may Asian media and like be all what it is. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the trademark, so I can't get too mad about it. Yeah, but it yeah. does get kind of annoying. Like they always use xylophone music for mm. comical scenes that sounds like it's from Coco Melon. <laughs> and like that's all I can yeah. think about. It's like this is like, music from a children's show. Yeah. 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 It, it's, <laughs> it gets a little weird sometimes. <laughs> And I really, you know what I really hate is when they are doing this, like, uh, tension moment, they're about to kiss or something like that. And it's just, like, not happening. It's they like could not be going any minutes slower. Of yeah. just standing there looking. <laughs> and I'm, in the back of my head, I'm just, like, imagining the, them acting out this and how long they actually have to stand there just looking at each other. <laughs> the stairs, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> And I mean, just kiss. God damn it. I don't need five minutes of foreplay. Just do it. <laughs> it's even like- worse whenever they don't end up kissing because something yeah. interrupts it. Or like yeah. they end the episode and they're just like standing there staring at each other, like in the same position. And they like, start how- the next episode <laughs> with the same exact scene for five All over more again. minutes. <laughs> And then, yeah. then something interrupts them and nothing happens. Yeah. <laughs> that did make me think of one more small thing that I know they do it for technical reasons, mm-hmm. but I hate when they sleep with the lights on. Like, yes. I know, I know it's for lighting purposes, yeah. but they sometimes people like you know sometimes they have just like a little bedside lamp or something like that and that's fine I can kind of see why someone would use that but sometimes they just sleep and they have like a whole overhead light still on and I'm how are you sleeping (laughs) like it is bright as day in your room and you're supposed to be going to sleep like Mm -hmm. no one ever turns off lights and I get why they do it but it's still so Annoying. it's just like a little thing I always notice during like bed scenes and they're supposed to be sleeping I'm like there's the light that's still on like yep. you guys are just sleeping with all of your lights on <laughs> yeah the flip side of that is whenever it's too dark you know, like, <laughs> you until can't see anything. <laughs> it's like where where's there's gotta be a happy medium here somewhere mm-hmm. Yeah, I I'm pretty much through my yeah, list. Like, yeah. <laughs> We've been I'm talking not. about this for like an hour now, which is 
ranting i mean we could probably talk about this for two more hours if we're really gonna get into it especially if we went through all of the ones that people gave us in the comments like if i was reading through all of these oh my god i could go into some long essays on some of them yeah yeah we'll we'll save some and do uh like pet peeves (laughs) season two part two (laughs) when we've accumulated more Okay, guys. So this is it for today. Um, make sure to follow us on social media. We do ask a lot of questions, announce stuff. And if you are curious about um, guests, future guests and, and getting um, series reviews and stuff like that, we have a Patreon. And um, like we have some guests coming up soon and we haven't announced it but our patrons Mm. already know (laughs) so (laughs) if you want to be in the inn (laughs) then (laughs) join the patreon and it's um it starts at two euros so it's not too bad and yeah just follow our new tiktok (laughs) we are um putting a lot of content out there <laughs> we've been acting <laughs> putting on our acting shoes <laughs> with some awesome guest to bl shows yeah i've been in a shower fully clothed and Kayla's jumping been... out of your washing machine <laughs> yeah Kayla's been playing basketball and I've yeah. gotten the easy one so much. <laughs> it's like caught up a little succulent. <laughs> Ellie likes has been a little salty. And, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, good. <laughs> it's awesome. So go check that out. All the links are in the description. And yeah. Follow... Leave us your BL pet peeves in the comments. Yes. Or if you're listening yeah. on a podcast platform jump over to our social medias and share them with us there because we want to know what else you guys are bothered by in BL. Mm -hmm. And make sure to leave a review if you're on podcasting platforms. Um, If you're on YouTube, subscribe, like the video and comment. It helps a lot. And we really love reading all the comments Mm -hmm. coming in. It's like the highlight Mm -hmm. of everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.